Jesus. Hallelujah to our King. Oh, come on, bless Him. Oh, come on, bless Him. Oh, come on, bless Him. Come on, bless Him. Come on, wake the flesh up and bless Him. Come on, wake the flesh up and bless Him. Come on, magnify Him. Come on, glorify Him. Come on and glorify Him. Come on, early will I seek You. Early will I bless You. Early will I make my boast in knowing You, God. Hallelujah. Come on and bless Him. 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 Come on, open up your mouth and glorify him. Come on, glorify him, church. Come on, glorify him, church. Come on, glorify him. We not just patty caking him for a few seconds. Come on, we're praising him now. We're giving him morning glory now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showering down on us. Thank you for victory over sin today. Thank you for victory, God. Thank you for victory, God. Thank you for victory over the wiles of the devil. Thank you for victory, God. Thank you for our shield of faith. Thank you because our shield have guarded us from the fiery darts of the enemy. Thank you for our helmet of salvation. Our helmet have protected us, God, from the insanity of Satan. And we praise you for it. Come on, I don't hear you praising him. We praise you for it. Come on, you gotta bless him for that. You got to bless him for that. You got to bless him for your helmet. You got to bless him for your helmet. You got to bless him for your helmet. Because if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? You got to bless him for keeping you. You got to bless him for covering you. We got to bless him. We got to bless him because the devil couldn't knock a helmet off. Come on and bless him. You got to bless him today. You got to bless him because Satan desires your mind. The devil desires your thoughts. So you got to bless God because he covered your thoughts with the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your blood. Come on, thank him for the blood. We thank you for your 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 blood. Your blood that washes. Your blood that cleanses. The blood that renews us. The blood that covers us. We thank you for your blood. Because it never loses its power. Come on, somebody praise him. Praise him for the blood. Praise him for the blood. Praise him for the blood. Oh my God, I wish I had a church today. Come on and praise him for the blood. Because the blood that never loses its power. The blood that pushes back the enemy. The blood that washes us clean. The blood that protects us from the wiles of the enemy. The blood that covers us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. We praise you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. The blood that heals. The blood that purifies. The blood that sanctifies us. Oh, my soul, thank you. My soul, thank you for the washing of your blood. My soul, praise you for the cleansing of your blood. My soul, thank you for the sacrifice of your blood. My spirit, praise you because I'll never fail. Covered by the blood. I'll never be sick. Covered by the blood. And if the enemy attacks me, the blood washes him back. The blood pushes him back. And so I praise you, God. I praise you for your sacrifice. I praise you for your only begotten son. I praise you for his death. I praise you for his resurrection. I praise you because of the works. I've been made worthy to come before your throne. I can come boldly to your throne today. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. 
Somebody bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Somebody need to walk around and give him praise. Somebody need to walk and give him praise. Somebody need to magnify him. Somebody need to glorify him. Come on, get out of your seat and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. We go into another level. But we got a press today. I feel a great anointing in here today. I feel a great breakthrough in here today. Who did I know? No, 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And because of the blood, my soul say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because of the blood, my soul magnify you. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Some of y'all looking around, but shut your eyes up and give him glory. Come on, give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Come on, you bless him. You got to press into the praise. Your flesh don't want to praise God. Your flesh want to give him a five-minute patty cake. But this is not the hour to patty cake God. You got to get in his presence. You got to get in his presence. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, bless him. 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 Come on, we get ready to tap a ram in here. Come on, bless him. You got to get to the throne. You got to get in the presence. You can't start telling God what you need until your spirit get a breakthrough. Come on, open up your mouth. You got to press in today. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a breakthrough. I feel something supernatural. You got to press. Come on, the power. You got to press up. Come on, the glory is in the house. You got to press up. Come on, victory is in the building. You got to press up. Come on, your breakthrough is here. You got to press up. Deliverance for your family. It's here today. You got to press up. Today is family day. I hear the Holy Ghost says, Today is family day. I'm breaking shackles up of your family. I'm delivering up. Your family, I'm giving your family a breakthrough. Open your mouth up. Come on and praise him. 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 Hey, come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come on, praise him. Come on, press him. 
Press, press, press. Press, press. Press, press. Press, press, press. Come on, you gotta press. You got to press. Come on, press. Come on, press. The music isn't your breakthrough. Your praise is your breakthrough. Come on, press. Rasha baba bahaya. Raba baba baba basata. He can another la la shanda. Raba baba baba siya. Hasha la 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 bole di asaya. Holiday di oshanda. Come on. Come on. All over the building. Victory is in the house. I feel victory. We break in the name of Jesus. We come God in the matchless name of Jesus. We break every illusion that the enemy has put over our family. The spirit of illusion. The spirit of illusion. We break your power. The spirit that's got them thinking that they're right when they're on their way to hell. We break it off of them today. We break illusion. We break that spirit of delusion. We break the spirit of pride. We break it off of our family. We break it off of our brothers and off of our sisters and off of our mothers and off of our fathers and Satan we command you to take your hands off. You are illegal. We break your power. We annihilate every assignment that you have sent forth against our family and we veto your contract. If you believe it today, you better start praising him. You better start shouting up. We break it up. We break it with our praise up. We break it with our praise up. We break it with our praise. Who the man of Oshanda? Rakasataya. Roba baby Ashanda. Come on, break that spirit up. Break the spirit of deception up. Break deception up. They're being deceived by the enemy. But we serve notice today. We break it up. We break deception up. We pull the scales off of their eyes. Pull it off, God. Pull it off, Thomas, God. Pull it off of him, God. Pull it off of him. Oh, God. I pick up in the spirit. I pick up in the spirit. God, break it off of Mariah Carey. Break it off of her, God. She's a chosen vessel. God, bring her in. Break it off of her, God. Break it off, Beyonce. Break it off, Angie Stone. Break it off, Jamie Foxx. God, we claim them for the kingdom. God, we claim them for the kingdom. God, we call them back to their original purpose. Come on, somebody. Help me travail. Oh God, break it off of Madonna. Help her to understand that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the light. God, break out in Hollywood. Start a revival. Upset the devil's kingdom. Overturn it. Turn it upside down. Break the illusion. Break the deception. Somebody give him a shout. Come on, pray in your heavenly language. Come on, pray in your heavenly language. We cancel it, God. We cancel it, God. We cancel every interception of the devil. We cancel it, God. We cancel it by the blood. We speak to the spirit realm. We speak to the satanic realm. And we bind your hands and your feet. We rebuke you now. You cannot intercept. We rebuke your interception. 
Shaya, but we release some greater power over your assignment that breaks your assignment. Every diabolical angel, we release you from your assignment. Go out of this place. Go from this people. Go from their families. Go from their churches. You're illegal. You don't belong here. We cast you out into the outer darkness. Somebody give him a shout. Come on, cast him out. Cast him out. He's illegal. Cast him out. We break your concentration. We break your concentration. You've been focusing on our families. You've been focusing. You've been putting all of your attention on us and what God has called us to do. We confuse your camp right now. We send a praise blast into your camp, Satan. We send a praise blast. And Father, in the name of Jesus, let this praise blast, let it confuse his plans. Let it confuse Satan. Let it confuse his works. Come on, praise him. God, I wish I had somebody here to understand the praise blast. Come on, confuse him. Confuse him. Confuse him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father, I hear you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we go into Satan's incubation. Every place where he's got a plan hiding, we call it out now. Come on, saints. Begin to rebuke his plan. He got a plan hiding in incubation. We go into the realm of the spirit. We kill your babies before they're born. We destroy your works before they come forth. We cancel them in your womb, Satan. We cause them to erupt in your womb, Satan. You will not come out. You will not come forth. You will not give birth. Kill it from the womb. Kill it from the womb. We kill your incubation. We destroy your prayer. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost real strong right there. Come on, pray violently right there. Pray violently right there. Pray violently right there. Because right I hear the Holy Ghost saying that, that there were some things that the enemy was about to dispatch, but we got to cancel it in the spirit. We got to cancel it now. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. You got to command the unborn works of the devil to cease. Oh, shut up, Abba. Oh, shut up, Messiah. Oh, shut up, Messiah. Oh, shut up, da 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 Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. We don't negotiate. We don't negotiate. We don't negotiate with you, Satan. We don't negotiate. We don't negotiate. We command you to come out now. We command you to take your hands off now. You're under our 
feet. Come on, somebody. Begin to point down to your feet and begin to declare to Satan that you're under our feet. Oh, you're under our feet. 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 Who could rub a cosop or so? Who could rub a cosop of Baba? Who could rub a shunga da masi? Who could rub a shunga da mahanda da bokosoya? Who could rub a cosida mahaya? No limitations in the spirit. Who rub a cassica na mahanda de diasaya? Who rub a shunga na mahaya? Who rub a saya? Come on, Zion. Who the lana mashaya? Come on, decree and declare it. No limitations in the spirit. Who the lana mashanga na mahaya? No limitations in the spirit. Who me a sika na na We cancel your stirrings. We cancel your stirrings. You're stirring up somewhere. You're stirring up somewhere. We cancel your stirrings. You stirring up somewhere. You stirring up somewhere. We cancel your stirrings. Come on, somebody in this place. Come on, cancel his stirrings. Whatever you trying to get started, we shut it down in the spirit. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody. We shut you down. We shut you down. Oh, Basika, no, 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 all I need is 33 fervent people for about 10 seconds. All I need is 33 people to shut him down. It takes power for the Bible said the fervent effectual prayers of a righteous man availing much. Shut him down. Shut him down. Shut him down. Shut him down. Horrible Oh, ba 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 Shut him down! Shut him down! We resist you. We resist you. And the word says, if we resist you, you got to flee. You got to go. Shut him down. Come on, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. We cut off your projections. We cut off your projections. We cut off any manifestation. We cut off any manifestation. We shut down your manifestations. We shut down your screen. We shut down your visibility. Seconds. Ten more seconds. 
Come on, begin to decree it. Begin to decree that I'm the head and not the tail. Come on, begin to decree that. Point down to him and tell him this. I'm not the tail, I'm the head. Begin to decree your authority. Come on, begin to decree to him that I take authority over you. I take authority over your works. I take authority over your power. I stand in a position of power. I'm seated at the right hand of God. I'm seated in my place of authority. And every work that is beneath the throne of God, I take control. Come on, talk to him. You got to declare it to Satan that I take my authority. I walk in my authority. I walk in my position. I rule from a heavenly place. And now I decree and declare. I decree and declare that my family will flourish in the kingdom. I decree and declare that my family will flourish in the kingdom. They'll flourish in the gospel. They'll flourish. They'll bring forth a mighty move of God. I decree it that my ministry will flourish in the gospel. Yes, Lord. Oh, lift your hands up all over the place. Lift your hands up all over the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go with me to the book of... Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Come on, pull it down. Come on, come on. Come on, pull it down. Come on. Come on, forget about your neighbor and you pull it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first verse. I'm just going to read a little bit of this. We had been looking at the first verse, we had already read it and quoted it. And so I'm not going to stop there. I want to get to the second verse. I have a reason for that. And the Amplified Bible says, now faith is the assurance the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Being the proof of things we do not see and 
the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact. I perceive it as a real fact. What is not revealed to the senses. What my emotions, my senses cannot confirm for me. The reason why I have to make this part plain is because when the Lord <clears throat> speaks certain things, and there's certain things he's trying to get you to grab, in the spirit, you can't allow your feelings. Because, because I'm picking up in the spirit that your knowledge of your situation is interfering with your faith for your situation. It's like the Holy Ghost is trying to speak victory in here, but because you have the knowledge of what's going on in your situation, you are allowing your mind to fight your faith. When your feelings don't even know what happened, your, your, your emotions have no idea what the Lord has done in this place today. And how do I know that? Because even with me saying that, there should have been a tornado in this place after I got through saying that. Because if you don't believe that, then why are you coming to prayer? If I come in this building and I come to prayer and God gives a prophetic word that I don't even understand all that he has done today concerning my situation, then I don't care what I know in my mind. I'm going to rejoice off of what God said. Let me help you with something. Sit down. to prayer I'm not coming to prayer to struggle I'm coming to prayer to be confirmed in my spirit about what I know belongs to me oh no I'm gonna say that one more time I'm gonna say because a lot of y'all think that you're coming to prayer to ask no you're not coming to prayer to ask you're coming to prayer to remove you're coming to prayer to remove the hindrance because you have already asked and the Bible said, even before you got to ask him, I had already answered you. So if I don't have it, then I come to remove something. I come to get inside of the spirit realm and find out where has Satan locked down my answer. Touch somebody and say, the Holy Ghost has already answered you. You know, you don't... You didn't even say that like you believed it. I said, tell somebody the Holy Ghost had already answered you. Tell them Satan got it tied up somewhere. I said, tell them Satan has it tied up somewhere. Did everybody just hear what I just said? Because you couldn't have heard what I just said because I was still looking right at some of y'all and you never turned your head and said anything. You have to understand that when you come into the spirit realm, obedience is your number one key. And the reason why you don't have it because you keep trying to do it your way. And the Holy Ghost trying to tell you that there is another way. He said there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end of that way is destruction. And in order for you to go to victory, the children of Israel, I don't care how bad they wanted to come out of Egypt, they need to have somebody to lead them out. Oh, come on somebody. It was enough of them to overthrow Egypt by themselves. Why couldn't they do it? Because God's method is to be led out. Ooh, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Now, if you can get out your way, then let me help you with something. We need your seat because it is obvious. It is obvious that we don't have enough room in here. And if you already know your way, then you need to pray at home. But this place right here is for people that are saying, I need somebody to help me get out. Now touch your neighbor and tell somebody that Satan has your deliverance tied up. Sit down, let me finish.
We're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna pray amiss. We're not gonna be in here hollering and crying and wailing and 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 not not tapping where we supposed to be. We're not gonna come in here when I say bless the Lord, when I say bless the Lord, when I say give God a praise, everybody praise. When I start saying warfare, I see people looking around and starting to look like you tired. Do you understand that in order to get your stuff back from Satan, you got to face a real enemy? And do you not know that the weapons of your warfare is not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the what? Pulling down. That means you got to participate. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody say that. Which means I can't come in here and pull it down for you. Because guess what? I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to pull my own stuff down. You better tell your neighbor, if what's going to come down in your house, you're going to pull it down your own self. We ain't got time to be sitting up in here looking cute and not wanting to sweat and not wanting to perspire and think somebody get ready to come and lay hands on you. No, you're going to fight for your own family's deliverance. The Bible said that there is a diadem in every family. There is one that's been chosen out of every family. That is the one that's going to lead the family to victory. And it is your assignment. If your brothers and your sisters and your mothers and your fathers die and go to hell, it is your fault. Y'all sit down. Sit down. Because God don't need no more secret agents. I'm going to say that one more time. I said God don't need no more secret agents. Well, I don't pray like that. Well, I, well you ain't got your wall yet. Because I'm pretty sure the children of Israel said, well, I don't pray like that, and I don't holler like that, and I don't think all that's necessary, and I don't think I got to travail like that. And they probably felt that way until they got to the wall of Jericho. And that's when the assignment changed. And the assignment said, you may have whispered in prayer through the wilderness and whispered in prayer around Mount Zion. But when you get to the wall of Jericho, you're going to have to open up your mouth and shout. Because there's some things that's only going to come down through spiritual violence. I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to some. This is not the prayer for just being sloppy or goppy. This is the prayer where we're going to bring down the strong man. And this prayer is going to require spiritual violence. Oh, sit down. Let me finish. Let me show you this. Thank you, Jesus. He's not going to, Satan ain't just going to sit back and just let you have it. He ain't going to just tell you because you came to prayer, you can have the victory. Oh, come on, somebody. He'll try everything he can. You feel great. And then you get up for prayer. All of a sudden, something hurt. And I don't feel good. And my back is hurting. And my head is hurting. And I feel a little nauseous. And I don't know what all of all of the all of these little bitty imps. Because he knows, he knows, he knows. Let me tell you something. The devil knows when 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 somebody that's coming to prayer is a fervent prayer and a pacified prayer. He already knows who has the ability to get the to get the job done. And that's the person that he attacks first. When the word says that that It tells us, it says, pray without ceasing. Me not to always pray and not faint. How many familiar with them scriptures? But then he gave this ingredient. But who's the perp who are the people that will, that will prevail? Who are the people that will always come out with the answer and the victory? The fervent, effectual ones. Not the ones that just pray without ceasing. I don't, I don't, I don't hear y'all talking to me. The fervent, the fervent effectual ones. The word fervent means to do something until it gets to the boiling point. 
The word fervent says to do something till it gets to the boiling point, till there is an overflow, till there is an eruption, till there is an, an, uh, an explosion. So that means fervent can't mean, and I just praise you, Lord, and I just give your name the praise, and I just, I just want to thank you, and I just want you just to just move by your spirit. Mm, really move, God. Mm, I just thank you, God. That can't be, that can't be fervent. That can't be fervent because, because, because there's something about your prayer that has to get to a boiling point. Have anybody ever put some water on the stove and when it gets to a boiling point, it blows all over the stove. It runs all down the side. It's everywhere. And if you don't turn it off, it'll come all the way down and start a fire. Come on, somebody. It'll start a fire. And if it starts a fire, to burn your house down. Do you get where I'm going? That means when I put something on the altar, I'm going to pray until it gets to the boiling point until it sets something on fire until it burns up the shaft of the enemy until his works come down oh you don't hear what I'm saying fervent y'all sit down for a minute fervent fervent meaning my mind is made up when I get to prayer that this ain't gonna be pretty on my way to prayer. Okay, because because what we're doing is we're bringing our on our way to prayer to the prayer. You got to start in your car with your own on your way to prayer prayer. Your own the way to prayer prayer in your car is hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the closer you get to church, you ought to be saying, God, I praise you. Lord, I thank you because I feel the victory in this place. You ought to already walk in the door with your mind made up. Baby, the fight is on. Because the devil has been messing with my life. He's been messing with my family. He's been messing with my friend. He's been messing with my finances. I'm sick of being where I am. And you know what? The devil don't play fair. And so, and listen, unless I get in the game and become fervent, he's not going to let me have the victory. The Bible said when the people of God suffer with violent, then the violent must take it by force. God, I wish I had a church in here to believe that. Which means you got to come in here hollering and don't give me that. Well, I'm tired and my throat's sore. We do it for everything else. We do it for the baseball game. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all. We'll sit through nine innings and never complain. Are you hearing what God has said? We'll go to concerts and shout until we're hoarse. But when it comes down to the victory for our lives, we give out after five minutes. We sit down after ten minutes. But I made up in my mind uh, that I will pray uh, in the spirit of fervent uh, until I fall out uh, because I'm tired of the devil holding uh, what belongs uh, to me uh, and my family. Sit down. Fervent. 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 Rasundarobo Sataya. Fervent. He needs to understand that if he was a physical person, I would whip the daylights out of him. He needs to understand that if I had five seconds with him in the natural, I would stomp his brains out. He needs to know that I'm violent, that I'm atrocious, and I'm not, listen, listen, listen. He's no longer chasing me. I'm coming after him. I'm charging him. Sit down. Sit down for a minute. I am so sick and tired of believers talking about the devil is after me. Pray for me because I'm in spiritual warfare. And I keep hearing the Holy Ghost say, we got to change this around. Pray for me because the devil is in spiritual warfare. Oh, you don't hear me. He's not chasing me. I'm looking for him. Did you hear my prayers? I wasn't praying, Lord, get the devil off of me. You didn't hear me say, oh, God, deliver me from Satan. I said, God, take me in the 
realm of the spirit uh, to his incubation. Uh, take me to his womb. Uh, I'm after the stuff he ain't even birthed out yet. Uh, I'm going inside of the devil's belly. Uh, I'm canceling his contract. Uh, I'm veto his assignment. I'm cutting him off at the pass. Uh, I'm not going to wait uh, until he attacks my family. I'm going to see it coming and cut it off. Some of us, some of us love living a day late and a dollar short. Pray for me, the devil, the devil did this. Pray for me, you don't know what happened yesterday. No, the Holy Ghost wants to put us on top of the game where we can tell our, our prayer partners, pray, because I saw something coming in the spirit. I saw something coming on Junior. I don't know what it is yet, but the Holy Ghost had already warm me. I had already fought that thing. Come on here, saints. Because the Bible said that God would not have us ignorant because of Satan's devices. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. He would not have us ignorant on behalf of Satan devices. He would not have us ignorant because we lack knowledge. He would not have us destroyed because we lack knowledge. And so therefore, we cannot be one like the Bible said. That's praying as if one beating in the wind. We got to find our target. God have mercy, Jesus. I wish I had somebody understand what I'm saying. You got to find your target. You just can't be wandering off in the spirit and saying, Satan, I say to what? Find your target. Find the spirit that lingers over your family. What is the stronghold in your family? Some of your strongholds is the spirit of alcohols. Your mother is an alcoholic. Your uncles are alcoholics. So you got to break that generational curse before it gets down to your children. Are you hearing me? You got to find a stronghold over your family and begin to break it all the way back seven generations. You gotta go back seven generations. It's I break the spirit of lesbianism. I break the spirit of homosexuality. I cut you off in the past. I start a new bloodline for my family. I decrease your power. I decree and I declare. What am I saying? I make an announcement. I'm declaring. I'm rendering a proclamation in the spirit that my family's bloodline, it changes in this five in prayer that my family bloodline it changes up my whole family it's transformed sit down I locate I locate okay here it is because the Bible said except you find the strong man If, if you don't find him, if you don't find the main spirit and locate him because everything is attached to him like a magnet, he's your lead man. Okay, Lord, help me, Jesus. Can I just teach this for two minutes? The strong man is the lead man. So if the strong man over your family had been poverty, nobody in your family ever seem to have been able to buy a house or buy a car or, or get anything. Okay, you find the strong man and then attached to that strong man would be a lion spirit, would be a spirit to steal, would be a spirit to prostitute. Are you hearing me? Because in order to make the strong man live, he's got to cripple the whole family. And so then he's got to send you doing things. He's got to send your sons and your daughters and your brothers and your sisters in the direction of doing things and trying to get things out side of God's will. So if you break the strong man, his demons scatter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you ain't gonna walk up on the playground and you four feet tall and fight somebody that's nine feet tall and you ain't got no weapon. Who am I talking to in here? Who am I talking? Listen, listen, the battle is already bigger than you. Goliath was already bigger than David. But what David had found is not a sword and a spear. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying. He didn't find armor for protection. What he found is the presence of the Lord. He found the presence of a 
Lord and the presence of the Lord anointed something that was insignificant to bring a giant down so when I tell you to praise God don't you sit there looking at me like I'm crazy because all you got is a rock in your mouth sit down sit down we're getting there already outnumbered. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. You already outnumbered. Can I, can I make a little observation here? The thing that you believe in God for, it's already bigger than you. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be here. It's already something that you can't solve. It's already something you can't work out. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let, me, let me go on this side because y'all over there it's already some stuff that you got on the altar before God on your heart that man can fix it and so what the Holy Ghost is trying to do he's trying to get you into a certain realm to let you know that what other people use to get it fixed you don't need that what you need is a rock oh Jesus and one Tuesday morning the rock can be travail and the next Tuesday the rock can be praise and the next Tuesday the Holy Ghost can tell me to tell you start running all over this building and the rock is your run and the rock is your shout and the rock is your holler but the thing you must understand is that God's gonna bring the giant down with a rock he gonna bring it down with something that's simple because the weapons of your warfare they are not carnal it's nothing that you can use in your own flesh to get it done it's going to be done not by power nor by might but by the spirit listen 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 so we must we must give birth to our fervency. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm gonna just sit up one more time. We must give birth to our fervency. I remember, brother, some years ago, more than a little past 10 years, you see, 1996 up until now, the year, the February prior to uh, July of 1996, so that was February of 1996. I was preaching, had been preaching since I was 16. My mentors called me off of the road and I took a sabbatical, but I had a problem. And my problem was, I couldn't even make it through a song and I would get hoarse. And so I had problems with my voice and I went to the doctor and they took my tonsils out. And they said, you're 20, 20, 21 years old but your tonsils gotta come out because whenever you use your voice for some reason they're over inflaming at your age and that usually happened to kids when they're young. So they said, we're gonna have to take your tonsils so they took my tonsils, nothing changed. I couldn't even make it through a song. By the end of the song, I would be hoarse. You could tell I was losing my voice. When I would preach, I could never, ever, ever make it through all of my message without losing my voice. And the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me about our, your voice being a weapon to the devil. That's why he says life and death is in the power. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so if life and death is in the power of the tongue and you come to prayer, Life and death is not in how you wave your hands. 
Life and death is not in the way you kick your feet. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And that's why the devil will make you do everything but open up your mouth. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. In other words, in order for you to get your breakthrough, you're going to have to say something. He's going to have to hear something coming out of your mouth. Sit down, let me finish. I could not minister. I couldn't. I would get hoarse, get hoarse, get hoarse. When the Lord started mounting me up and he started prophesying to me, that you're getting ready to go to the nations. I'm getting ready to send you to the world. In my natural mind, I couldn't see it happening. Because I couldn't talk. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't last in a message. And I didn't understand how God was going to do it. But the prophecies kept coming. And I kept believing God. And one day I went to a meeting at our church. This woman came, 80 some years old, named Mother Boyd. But I was in my seat and people were getting in line because her, her anointing, she was my spiritual mother, her anointing was to pray for people. And everybody was getting in line. And I didn't feel led to get in line. I sat there and when the whole church had marched around and she had laid hands on hundreds of people and they were getting ready to take the offering and the power of God hit her and she yelled out and she turned around and looked over at me and she said you baby come here and I walked over to her and that woman took her hand laid it on my voice took a handkerchief that was tied around her. Many of you saw me for over a year wearing the white handkerchief tied around my neck. She tied that handkerchief around my neck and she yelled out that God was gonna open my voice like a trumpet. And she hit me in my belly and I went out under the power of God. When I came to, I was wailing out to the top of my lungs. I wailed out like that for I don't know how long. They had to take me home. They had to pick me up and carry me out. My spirit traveled. I'm telling you, I, I had an outer body experience where my spirit began to travel over auditoriums all over the world. And when my spirit came back in my body, remember that? I was there and my arms was waving on the floor. And Mother Boyd said, she going to collect her people right now. He, she said, she said, saints of God, let me show y'all something. Right now, God's sending her to the nations right now. And I was going, I was flying faster than lightning over auditoriums, over major buildings. And when my spirit went in a complete circle and landed back down in my spirit, up out of my mouth came. Aah! And God supernaturally anointed me with the power that is in my voice today. Do you know why? Because he knew that it was going to be not my hands, not my legs, not my stomach, but my voice shouting like a trumpet that was going to break the captive free. Sit down for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't understand it. And so she told me, she said, for one solid year, wear the handkerchief tied around your neck every time you preach. And people talked about me. Why she got that around her neck? And what does all that mean? And why she got her neck tied up? But I'm going to tell you something. I didn't get my deliverance with a sword and a shield. I got it with a rock. I got it with somebody who understood the anointing of a rock. You trying to get your deliverance with something big. But it's right in your mouth. It's in the spirit of your obedience. Who am I preaching to? You don't know the power that God. God is trying to put in your mouth. That's why he 
he got you coming to prayer. He's trying to birth you into spiritual violence. Let me help you with something. Somebody say authority. Somebody say authority. Somebody say authority. Come on, come on. You did, you did. Authority. You know, when I was a child too, my mother, my mother would, you know, say, uh, need to get over there and sit down. And sometimes I would go. And sometimes I would. And she said, go sit down. And then I wouldn't. But when she said, go sit yourself down. That was a whole nother spirit. <laughs> now y'all ain't saying that. And then when she, when she got to the point where she was sick and tired of say being sick and tired. And she was sick and tired of just gritting her teeth. Then she got violent. And go sit down, increase from need to go sit down, to go sit down, to did not tell you to go sit down. How many know after that I sat down? Okay, let me make a point. Stop Satan. Did not tell you to stop Satan? He's trying to, I don't know where all y'all come from. I don't know where everybody come from. I don't know where everybody's churches is from. I don't know. But this next level of your life and what the Lord is trying to use you to accomplish, what he's trying to say to you, it's going to take the fervent level. And so the Lord will, he will design the place for you to come so you can respond in fervency so people won't look at you like you're crazy. So every now and then you may have to holler out when everybody is quiet, but we understand why you're hollering. Because something just done hit your spirit that done told you, I got to get violent with this thing right here. Oh, come on, because the devil got to know you ain't playing with him. The devil got to know that you just not just no mere Christian that's in church that's just coming to prayer. I'm not coming to prayer. I'm coming to annihilate you. I'm coming to destroy your works. I'm trying to cut a pathway for my family. I'm trying to remove you from the gate. I'm trying to remove every stumbling blocker. I came to put you under my feet. I came to let my family know that they got somebody that's standing up in the gap for their deliverance. I want them to know that I'm going to be strong and mighty and mighty in battle. Turn around and touch three people and say, I ain't giving up, I ain't giving up. Touch three people and say, I ain't giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. quick so I can show you about a battle. Woo. Do y'all know why I'm here? Do you know why I'm here? I'm not here to fight the battle. I'm like Joshua and Caleb. I'm here to tell you, let me look in at this enemy. Oh, y'all can take them. Sit down, because you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. 
You didn't hear me. Because sometimes it can get so out of control and you feel like you're fighting by yourself. So you just need somebody to go and look in on the land and survey and tell you what you're working with. And so I came these weeks to tell you, you can whoop this one. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You got what it takes. Hallelujah. Sit down, let me. Come on, we close. Sit down. We close. We close. How do I know we close? Because I'm going to show you how. Show you how. Come here, Johnson. See, when you get close to conquering the enemy, the enemy, because you be minding your own business. You love God. You in this thing to serve the Lord. You're not in this thing. Listen, your purpose is not to fight the devil. Your purpose was to serve the Lord. Now, he the one be picking the fight. You, you, you over here minding your business. And here he come. He hit you. Hit me, Johnson. He hit you. And you go, stop, Satan. And you going back to working for the Lord. And while you working for the Lord, unexpectedly, he hit you again, harder. You ain't trying to, you say, stop saying. And you just going on, going on. You working for God. But he keeps on hitting you. Keep on. Keeps on hitting you. Keeps on hitting you. Keeps on hitting you. Hitting your family. Hitting your finances. Just, just met you trying to, you trying to work for God. You ain't, you ain't trying to get into no fight with him. And he just, and then he doubles up. And he start hitting you. And hitting you, and hitting you, and hitting you, hitting you, hitting you, hitting you. And you just. So then, it's your turn. <laughs> to hit him back. Because, sit down, let me tell you this, sit down, let me tell you this, let me tell you this, because you got to learn this, because I can tell some of y'all, some of y'all wasn't raised in the ghetto and you don't know the principles of a fight. If you keep letting somebody pick on you every day and you don't never retaliate, they going to take your lunch money, they going to take your popsicles, they going to take your gum, they going to take your book bag, they going to take over your locker, y'all ain't saying nothing. They gonna come in the cafeteria and take your lunch. You ain't gonna be able to eat. You gonna go home with a knotted stomach. You ain't gonna be able to sleep until you make up in your mind. You make up in your mind that today I'm going to school and live, sink, or survive. They not go. This gonna be the last time. Now let me tell you. Sit down. Sit down. Let me tell you what happens. When, when it's your turn to fight a bully, see, I done had these experiences. When it's your time to fight a bully, this big old girl, you can't, you can't strategize. Cause you can't fight a bully and conquer the battle be until you get tired, because tired will give you the insanity that you need. Cause see, you got to be crazy. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing to me. You, you can't go to school talking about, I'm tired of you messing with me and I'm good. And, and, and come on, let's fight, cause I ain't gonna run from you no more. That day, I was tired. And I got up. I French braided my hair. I got me some Vaseline and put it all over my face. 
and I used to wear a big old afro. I got my pick and put it in my back pocket. I didn't hear nothing the teacher said all day. I was insane. I was crazy. I saw one thing, three o'clock. That's all I saw was three o'clock. I'd already told my friends, y'all take my book back. Get my book back. And I didn't wait till the bully found me. The bell rang and I headed straight for her. She was standing there talking to some people. Before she knew it, I jumped on her with my pick. And I wouldn't stop hitting. I went crazy. Are you kidding me what I'm saying? That's how you have to do the devil. You can't just slap him. You got to go insane. You got, you got to pray in season and out of season. You got to pray all night. That's why you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Because I'm insane. I'm sick of you. I'm tired of your mess. I'm tired. prayer don't break this father I just want to thank you for your goodness and we just really just want to give you praise for all that you've done and we bless you that ain't gonna cut the mustard cause the devil's sitting back with shades on and a cigar he waiting for he said, oh, all right. He got him a wine cooler. He ain't moved. Oh, we got one of them. We just want to give you. Hallelujah. Lord, just the sweetness of your. Oh, so we got a sweetness in your presence one. What y'all got planned for her? Because apparently she don't know we the devil. All right, let's come to the table. Because we got it. He's sweet in the spirit one. That's been praying he's sweet in the spirit for about 10 years. What you got for her? Because she don't know we the devil. And she thinks that we just going to let her tell Jesus he's sweet. All right, so what's the plan? Well, we got cancer. No, because she going to still think he's sweet in Jesus. She the type that's going to still just bless the Lord because he's so wonderful. And she's going to say, whatever the Lord is. No, we got to show her that we the devil. So we're going to let Johnny flunk in school. We're going to let her daughter that's 15 get caught up with somebody that's in his 20s. We're going to let her husband go absolutely crazy. And we're going to give her cancer. That sweet in Jesus going to change. And a lot of y'all think that it's just satanic warfare. But what I'm telling you is this. Is that the Holy Ghost need the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous. You don't hear me? And some things he allows Satan to do to increase your fervency. No, I wish I had somebody to say something right there. I wish I had somebody to say, he, he allows Satan to do things because, listen, listen, a whole lot of us know how wonderful God is, but not many of us know how to do battle in the realm of the satanic. Because we keep running from the devil and we never get to know the devil so that we can know his works. God's looking for people that'll be able to look at a spirit and say, honey, I know that spirit. Don't be scared because I done fought this demon before right here. I already know how this demon going to act. Now, you know what? He going to try to make you feel like la, 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 la. But when all that come, honey, he coming out. So you just hang in there because I know this spirit. Oh, no, this is a different spirit right here because I know him too. Same person. Uh-huh. I know same spirit. Different color, different height. But trust me, I know this demon. How many times... Oh my God, when is God going to find some people to be able to say, just like you say, I know God, I know the devil. 
oh, I know this spirit of insanity right here. I know how this spirit acts. Oh, this spirit of anorexia, I done fought that devil before. I done conquered him. Let me tell you how to fight him. It's time for somebody to tell us how to fight this enemy. It's time for somebody to understand that, 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 that fighting Satan must be strategic. We cannot just get in the spirit room and start calling his name and saying, devil, I rebuke you. You got to know the strategy of what you're dealing with. Oh, my God. You got to go and get a dictionary. You got to look up the spirit of lust. You got to find out what its connections are. So when you get back in prayer, you're not just hollering loud, but you're calling out every spirit and every connecting spirit, and you're bringing that thing down, and you're digging it up by the root. You're not praying against symptoms. You're digging out the problem. Because you can say, no, see, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close. You can say, pray for me because I just keep kissing it. <laughs> well, Father God, we just thank you right now. We just bind the spirit of kissing. <laughs> just pray for me. I just keep kissing I don't know why I keep kissing it. And every time I think I'm, I'm not going to kiss no more, I do it. And I just kiss anybody. Okay, we just touch and agree. We're going to touch and agree. And we bind the spirit of kissing. And Father, just give her the strength to stop kissing. I'm a believer. I got faith. I just prayed for her. But she's not going to be delivered. Because I prayed amiss. I missed. I missed. And so Satan will let us keep praying. And she'll come back again two weeks later. Papa's about to pray for me again because I fell again. Okay, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that she stop kissing. And we really pray that you give her strength this time. She's going to come back. Until I go back and say, let's try kissing. Kissing. Is kissing the spirit or is kissing a manifestation of a spirit? Okay, kissing is not a spirit. Kissing is a manifestation of a spirit. What is the manifestation of the spirit of kissing? Mm. Lust. Okay, the spirit of lust. What does lust house? Lust. Because that which is given to you by God, to be your mate is love, and it's perfected love. When the spirit of lust is involved, then the reason why the spirit is called lust, it is because it is a perversion of what real love is. So then what, what lust is trying to do is trying to imitate the love of God, which means it's trying to cause you to respond to each other in a perverted way that was unintended by God. It is illegal. It is illegal for you to touch somebody or handle somebody that is not your husband, that is not your wife. So now we're not just dealing with lust. We're dealing with the connecting spirit of lust. It's perversion. So then we have to bind the spirit of perversion and put you back into the perfect love of God. And once we put you back into the perfect love of God, then we can break lust off of you because lust is connected to a perverted way of thinking. So when I break the spirit of perversion, and why must I break perversion? Because if perversion is the strong man, then out of perversion, doing it the wrong way, loving the wrong way, touching illegally can turn into homosexuality and lesbianism and having sex with dogs and cats and, and all kinds of stuff because locked in perversion is every other evil sexual work so if I don't break perversion off of you then you may be kissing right now but the next thing you know you'll be kissing an animal and you'll be into lesbianism and homosexuality because I'm over here praying for kissing when I need to be over here digging up the spirit of perversion so that the spirit of lust because once you kill perversion then lust don't have nothing to grip hold to and once you rebuke lust then the unnatural affections of the flesh will begin to die and your emotions will begin to come into the order of the will of God and when that happens you're not battling kissing you're standing in faith and power
I gotta let you sit in that one for a minute. The prophet is mine. Pray for me because, because I just, I, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I just, you know, I just keep getting angry and, and I lose my temper and I lose my temper. Okay, let's deal with anger. Let's deal with anger. Anger is a manifestation. Losing your temper is a manifestation. You lost your temper because that's a manifestation. I cannot pray that you would stop losing your temper. I got to go all the way back and dig and find what, what the what the strong man, because if you're losing your temper, you're angry. And if you're angry about something, you're annoyed by something. And if you're annoyed by something, it's because there's some unforgiveness. There's an offense there. You've been offended by something. And if you are offended by something, and this offense is there, then unforgiveness is there. And if unforgiveness is there, then unforgiveness, the root of unforgiveness, it's bitterness and so now you're entering listen you're operating in the spirit of bitterness because unforgiveness is there so then what we got to do is we got to come back here and get unforgiveness and we got to have you to deal with that situation and help you to understand that that person may not never apologize to you that hurt you in your childhood but you can't beat your wife because you got hurt in your childhood you can't slap your kids because your mother and your father molested you I'm preaching to somebody in here you got to go back and you got to dig that thing out and say God I'm coming to pray because I'm after unforgiveness and I want you to cause my spirit to be flipped over in grace that I may forgive those that have offended me because when I forgive then the bitterness leave and when the bitterness leave then the anger goes and when the anger goes I'm able to walk in love and then I don't lose my temper because I don't have the root of bitterness in me that's charging me and every time I see something that reminds me of my childhood I react and I respond and I overreact because I'm operating and unforgiveness so I would not travail out in prayer that God would help me with my temper I would travail out in prayer that God would take me back to the root of my problem help me to dig that thing out help me to carve that thing out of my spirit and get rid of it Did I just help somebody? Oh, Lord, help me. No, 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 no. It ain't no more, oh, Lord, help me. It's, oh, Lord, reveal to me. Because the word said, except you go and get the strong man. You will never have victory in your house until you go get your strong man. But Lord, the prophet is just pray. I'm here to pray and ask the Lord to help me with this cussing. Well, let's find out why you cuss. Let's find out why you curse. You curse because you operating under a spirit of perversion. You curse because there's some perversion in your spirit. Anytime you do anything opposite of the way the Lord has ordained it to be done, it is automatic perversion. Amen. So you don't use English. You use the perverted side of English. So actually, you pervert it. That's so strong because we don't like to think like that. We just want to think us to be saved and just so sweet and just so, so lovely in Jesus. But if, if there's something in you that does something opposite of the way that the word, the word said, prof it's, it said stay away from profane language. If you can't stop, then perversion is still hanging around somewhere in your spirit. And you got to locate that thing. You got to get it because it's hiding. And when you break that strong man, oh God, then the spirit of righteousness will take root in your heart. Am I teaching something in here tonight? Am I ministering to somebody in here? And whenever you see things come out of you, unexpected, uncontrollable, you throw stuff and don't know why you threw it and you go off and, and holler and you don't know why, then you gotta go back and say, you know what? There's some perversion in me. There's some unforgiveness in me. There's some bitterness in me. And if I don't get this out, I can never fight the enemy because Jesus said that the prince of this world cometh but he finds none of him in me. In order for Jesus to take down his enemy, the enemy had to come and not be able to find none of his spirit in Jesus. You're fighting against the wrong thing. Can I give you a, a nugget before you go home? 
if the enemy can find a part of himself in you. This is going to be so deep. If the enemy can find any part of himself in you, Johnson, then though we look like we fighting the enemy, we have actually come to prayer to enter into an alliance with him. Okay, maybe the word alliance was too big. Let me just break it down. Because some of y'all looked at me like, Can look like I'm oh Rabbi Shandaba. Say the Nalab. Hallelujah. Rasha Labasa. I can look like that on the outside. But if there's some bitterness in there that I refuse to let go, and if there's some envy in there that I refuse to let go, and if there's some jealousy in there that I refuse to let go, and there's an offense in there that I said, I don't care what happened, I'll never forgive him, and they can't never talk to me in my bed, and I'd never say nothing to me. Honey, I could care less if I ever see him again. What? You, they better not. I don't want to see him. Then when you get in prayer, and you enter, see, I can't even go into all this right now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this up Tuesday because I have to start teaching this now. When I enter into the spirit realm, what realm have I gone to? Have I gone to the third realm to make my petition known toward God? Or have I stopped at the second realm where the principalities reign and now I am in alliance with Satan. We're not getting anything done in the spirit. We become his companion. And he laughs at that because he's saying they're looking like they're warfaring, but they're really strengthening my kingdom. Because I got everybody in here at one time at 5 o'clock in the morning, and they all hollering, and they all screaming, and they all saying that they're praising God, but I'm really getting the glory. So you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to give the devil the glory? No, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning so that I can locate him. So that I can use the spiritual radar to locate where he's hiding. You don't hear me. So that I can get into this divine presence and say, Lord, let it surface. Whatever been hiding, let it surface. That's how I pray. I don't know how y'all pray. God, whatever is in me that's hiding, let it surface. Dig it out. Because there's some deep places that I don't even know stuff is hooked up to. God, dig it out. God, show me. God, reveal. And when I'm telling you, while I'm in prayer, that thing come to the surface. And I just begin to weep before God. I got to weep that thing out. I got to cry that thing out of my spirit. I got to wail that thing. And why am I going to do Why am I doing that? Because I have an assignment. Because other people's lives and situations are depending on the power that God has given me to intercede. But if I don't get that stuff done, then I'm not an effectual, fervent intercessor. Effectual means I did the damage. Because when I come to prayer and I'm coming here on my assignment, I'm in the hotel saying, God, everything. Stuff I don't even know. Do you not know that ever since I've been coming to Kansas City, we changed hotels last night. We were staying in the same hotel for the first two times. Every night when I get in this city and I go to bed, somewhere between 1.30 and 3 o'clock, I have an ambush of demons. Did y'all hear me hollering last night? Did you hear me hollering last night? Last night, I was laying on my stomach sleep. 
And I thought it was them coming in the room. And I heard chains and keys and I heard them like rush through the door. I, at first I thought it was, um, at first I thought it was, you don't have something happen in hotels like fires or something and somebody got to run in and say, hurry up and wake up. And I heard this rushing of these feet and these keys and these chains. And when I went to look up, they jumped me on the bed. And they were holding me down. And I began to say, I veto your contract. I annihilate what you came to do. I break your power right now. In the name of Jesus. And it broke. I dozed off. Went back to sleep. I woke up again. Because I thought Bonita had came in and turned the light on. I sat up in the bed and it was dark in the room. And just as I laid back, the lamp all the way on the other side of the room came on. And I said, and I see all the manifestations. I see all of your projections. I see how you're trying to project yourself in the atmosphere. But I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you. You can believe this or not. When I told the devil I wasn't afraid of him. You heard the light switch on the lamp. Click. And the light went out. I laid back down again. in the chair, in the bedroom. I sat up and I saw the film of like a black spirit dancing all the way across. I said, I'm not afraid of your projections. Every Monday night, since I've been coming to this prayer, I've been experiencing that. To the point that last night I almost sat up and said, I'm not going to sleep. Why am I saying this? Because if I don't teach you that you are in a real battle, but if I don't teach you that you have authority and that Satan is under your feet and that he's in the earth realm illegally, do you not know that he's not supposed to even touch his foot down unless he's in a body? If you feel his presence, I'm, 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 I'm telling you this. He only has access through a person that allows him to use them. And the only way he remains then is because that person is walking in perversion and they've refused to give their life to God. But if your house is a sanctified house, if you are the head of your house, and you are a born again believer and he shows up anywhere on the grounds where you live, he is illegal and he has no business being there. No, you don't hear me. He's illegal by the scripture, which means you ain't gotta have no whole lot of prayer life to rebuke him. He has to go. You, okay, I don't, I, you don't have to beg him to go. You don't have to plead for him to go. He is illegal. And let me tell you something. When the enemy fights, he must stay within the guidelines of the rules. He cannot cheat. And when you see him cheating, you can rebuke him, pull him down, shut him down. You can start talking to him. When he show up and put his hands on your kids, say, now you cheating. Get your hands off. He's under your feet. You have authority. That's where he is. How many people believe that? He's under your feet. 
And that's why when you pray, you got to put him there. Because if you don't put him there while you're praying, he'll dance all over your prayer. He'll take control of your prayer meeting. You'll be trying to pray in your house and just wandering spirits, wandering in your mind, tormenting spirits. Phones start ringing, folks start hollering, stuff start falling. In my prayer room, when I get caught up in prayer sometimes, all my candles one night fell off of the mantle. Prayer shawls blew and turned up. Because I'm tapping rams. I'm tapping rams of purification. He knows that I'm headed into that dimension. He knows that I'm headed into that realm. I'm unafraid of him. I've battled this all my life from a child. When I was three and four years old, my mother used to have to get up out of her bed and run in my room and grab me because demons would have me. Since I was a little girl, I'm familiar with these spirits. And I can't get here now when there's a nation waiting in travail to learn about God and learn about your authority. You have authority over sin. was landing on the plane coming into Tampa and a storm came up and they said it was a thunderstorm and I heard the flight attendants talking and they said it was going to be a bad storm in, in, in Tampa for the next three days they shut down the airport and my plane was over Tampa and they turned it around and made it go back to another city when they turned my plane around I got my Bible out this man was sitting next to me in first class and I start pointing out that window I start commanding the weather I start commanding Satan I start canceling his contract I went in his belly and aborted his assignments I vetoed him I, I, I slapped him upside his head I, I could just see the devil just go. I, I, I vetoed him. I canceled him out. I aborted him. I became subordinate. I, I superimposed him. You know what superimposed means? It means that there's a power. There's a there's a power that be. But when you superimpose, you lay a greater power on top of that power, and it diminishes. I did it all. I turned the weather. I talked to the wind. I sent the waves. I told the storm, "You go east." I rebuke you from over the city of Tampa, and it left. It left. The thunderstorm left. And that's when he began to say to me, I've given you power just like I've given Jesus. You have the power to speak to the winds and the waves. Y'all ain't hearing me. The angel said, who is man that thou art mindful of him? Who is man that you've given him all this authority? Do you know you can turn it around? Do you, do you know you can walk out of this building today and speak over your family and decree and declare stuff over your life and it will be instantly broken? By the words that come out of your mouth. You gotta watch what you say. Today, your assignment for the rest of the week is you got to watch your life and death because this thing right here is powerful you can speak that thing so this is not going to happen I don't receive this right here and I cancel this right here I cancel the activity of the enemy right here I cancel what he's doing and don't ever cancel nothing without decreeing something new if you cancel Satan's work, then turn around in the same breath and say, and I decree a powerful move of God. I cancel depression and I decree joy shall spill over in my spirit. Am I helping somebody right there? Am I helping you right there? 
I cancel depression and I speak life. I decree life in my spirit. I cancel depression, but I speak joy. I decree eternal joy coming up in my soul. I cancel confusion, but I decree the peace of God. I cancel poverty, but I decree prosperity. break a power, you release the power. I'm going to let you take that one home. I said, if you break a power, release a power. <laughs> if you tear it down, tell you what Jesus said. He said, you watch this temple because if you tear this down in three days, I'll rebuild it. If you tear it down the spirit, rebuild something else. If you tear down confusion, build peace. Because out of the words that come out of your mouth, you can turn your situation. The power to create something new. You're not just coming to prayer to have a good time. You're coming to power to get your license. Come on, somebody. I said you're coming to prayer to get your license. You're coming to prayer to get your license back. Because the devil done pulled you over illegally. You come to tell him, I got my driver's license. And I'm going forward. I came to get my authority back. Because you've been whipping my head for all these years. And God done sent the woman of God into this city for these next few weeks. Just for me to get my authority back. And by the time I get through, I'm going to be decreeing and, de and declaring and pulling down over you. Because you'll no longer keep my family, my life, my mind, my spirit in bondage. I'm going to be free by the words that come out of my mouth. If you decree a thing, he said, if you decree a thing, as I close, what does the word decree mean? As I looked that up in the dictionary, the word decree means I make a decision. He said, if you make a decision that this thing is broken by the power of God, then I will bring it to pass. What you allow to happen on earth, God allows it to happen in heaven. So you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us to get the order. He's waiting on us to get the principle right. You're not waiting on God to fix it. Stop telling people that. God's waiting on you to get it in order. Because you will decree it. You will speak it and it will come to pass. You will rebuke it and it will be shut down. Whew. Tell somebody I got power with God. You don't want to miss Tuesday because I'm going to begin to teach the strategies of prayer. There's two things we're going after. You got to find your voice in prayer. Some of y'all don't understand what that means, but I'm going to help you. You got to find your voice because you don't know your voice in prayer. Satan don't know your voice in prayer. Hallelujah. Well, I pray. Oh, hallelujah. But you got to find your voice in prayer. You got to find what you sound like in prayer. That's why you got to break out and start praying in your house sometimes. God's trying to give you a voice in this prayer. <laughs> this voice I got right here, it works everywhere. It works in my basement. Sometimes I'm driving my car. And that thing will hit me. And I start praising God. And I go, ha, ha, ha. He know what that means. He know I'm coming after him. I'm in my car, but I'm coming after him. I'm walking down the street, but I'm coming. I'm on the, honey, it's done happened to me on the treadmill. I'm in the gym jogging. And I forget where I am sometimes. I'll just be. Ha ha! I have to turn around and tell my gym, I'm all right. I'm all right. Everybody turn around and look at me. to take that stuff off my ears because I get caught up. You up there 45 minutes and you, oh, thank you. Then 
And all of a sudden, that power went, oh! And everybody in the gym was like, I said, I'm all right. I'm sorry. I'm a little loud. It's all right. I'm all right. Now when I go to the gym, they be looking at me like, because I done jumped off the treadmill before and ran around the whole gym. That power hit me, and I jump off the treadmill and head around the whole gym and come back and get back up there and just have to hold on for a minute. And I look up, and they be all looking at me, and I be just, because you know what I'm doing? I'm getting my win. The devil knows even my workout is against him. I'm jogging so I can last in prayer. I'm running on the treadmill, so after two hours, I'm still going. I'm still saying, come on, devil, where you at? Y'all laid over in the chair about to die on me. I'm looking around here, and all y'all looking like y'all just got done whipped in the spirit. But you know what? I've been on that treadmill in that stair master, and I'm ready to run down this way. After two hours, y'all looking like, oh, God. And I'm still hollering, come on! Come on, give him praise. It's three hours. <laughs> some strength it takes strength to kill a demon it takes strength to break a power that's why you got to start walking get yourself some exercise so if the Holy Ghost take us up in the spirit for two hours you can last you like an ever ready baby and the more you holler, the more energy you get. Hold on, I'm shining on my side. Help! We just like the Indians. Before the Indians go to battle, you hear them on the other side of the mountain. Hanna, 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 hanna. They get ready. Touch your neighbor and say, get ready. See, because in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be teaching spiritual strategies. And I can't keep hollering, come on. Because see, it's a spiritual wave. You may not understand it, but I understand spiritual dimensions. I understand spiritual dimensions and portals and waves. And because I'm leading the prayer, sometimes I can feel that thing when it shifts. And I can feel when the Holy Ghost wants us to get more intense right there. And you can't have me up here saying, come on. And you going... And you done sat down and put your prayer shawl on and went to rock it. Because we ain't got but a few more weeks. And there's a realm in prayer that we have to tap that's going to birth you out. I came to birth you 